preaching conference that we're going to have going on for a while. But we, we are going to spend a great time. We're calling it Midweek Fire. This is a time when we gather together midweek and we start getting fired up about what God is doing all around the world. We're going to hear from people. They're going to give testimonies and preaching and things that are going to actually inspire you during this season in your life. God has led Sister Delgado and I to, to, to bring out there and give you something that's going to give you an example of what's going on outside of your world, outside of your little place where you live. And we believe that God is going to do some great things. Somebody's going to get the Holy Ghost. Somebody's going to get baptized. Somebody's going to say, this is the first time I've heard about Jesus Christ in this fashion. And I'm going to give my life to Jesus. We're, we're excited about that. And we want to first go into prayer. We want God to have his way in everything that we're doing tonight. We want him to just take control, gather your family, download the lesson on lighthouseofthevalley.org, but allow God to just move in right where you're at. So if you can, just stand to your feet, lift up your hands, and begin to close your eyes and let God have his way. Let's pray for his presence. We want to pray also for Francisco Barba today. He's in need of our prayer. He's got this COVID-19 in a bad way, but we know that our God is greater and can do anything. We've been praying and we want to intercede now with the Barba family and we want to stand in the gap with them. And you may know someone else that needs prayer tonight. If they're in your presence, go on and lay hands on them and pray over them. If, you, if they come to mind, pray as we're praying. And let's ask ask God to have his way over this service and everything he wants to do. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of getting together again. We gather as your people, Lord. We, we, we stand as a sample of what you want to do in the earth. We ask you through this midweek fire that you would have your way. You see Francisco Barba. You know everything about him. You know every hair upon his head. They're numbered. Thank you for taking him into the waters of baptism and allowing him to go that way. But God, we want to see restoration of his body. We know that you're able to do greater things than we can ever imagine. We pray that you'll cover the Barba family as well. Lord, that they would be uplifted today. We know they're heavy hearted. But in Jesus' name, we're able to stand in the gap with them. Lord, we pray over everyone that's gathering online, everyone that has their family, or maybe they might be all by themselves, no matter where they're viewing, uh, whatever time zone they're in, we're asking God that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is everywhere present at the same time, can just go right in there where they're at and make a difference. God, we praise you, and Lord, we lift you up, and we invite your presence, and we accept everything that you're going to do here tonight in Jesus' name. Can you say in Jesus' name? Go ahead and put your hands together for the Lord and thank Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We also want to congratulate Cynthia out there. If she's watching, she was baptized on Sunday. She just happened to be walking past our service and listening to what was going on in our parking lot and came out and got baptized. Our first baptism on site during this COVID-19. We've had many baptisms, 39 of them in particular, but this was the first one that we've had when we gathered together on site. And the Lord is doing a great work work. We want to just thank God for that. So Cynthia, if you're listening, if you're watching, we want to congratulate you and hope to see you Sunday and we can give her a certificate at that time. Without further ado, I'm going to be bringing our, our speaker tonight, good friend of mine, Dr. Art Wilson out of Detroit, Michigan. He, he pastors a great church there and you're going to enjoy his ministry, the International Church of Detroit Metro. He, he's got a great testimony and the Lord is using him on cutting edge places in our world. So we're going to just sit back, relax, and enjoy what God is bringing to your house. You don't want to miss these midweek fire, fires because God is going to set someone ablaze by the word of God that comes to us. So without any other words, I bring to you Dr. Art Wilson. God bless. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, Lighthouse of the Valley. Praise the Lord, Pastor Delgado and the First Family and the incredible and powerful work that you're doing for the Lord. I'm so honored to be able to be with you on this Midweek Fire Conference. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to what God is going to do in the few minutes that we are together. I feel like my purpose and my assignment for you today is 
to basically talk to you about current events and the things that are taking place in the spirit and what is quickly getting ready to take place in the spirit. My hope is to start a fire in us like never before in this session, that we will leave here with a sense of urgency like never before. My name is Pastor Art Wilson, and I am the pastor of the International Church of Metro Detroit, and we are church planners. We have been there now since 2001 and seen many souls saved, many people come to the Lord in great revival. We've overseen another, a number of works and tried to be a blessing where we can to other works that are, that are getting started, and we just thank God for that. And notably, recently, um, we started the ministry within the United Nations in Manhattan, New York. Yes, the United Nations in Manhattan, New York, the large global one world system, the United Nations that oversees everything currently in many people's opinion. We have started a work within the United Nations in 2013. God opened the door, great miracles happening. Uh, one, a person that was very high up in the UN came to our service, got baptized in Jesus' name, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and got completely healed of a terminal disease and have all the medical records to prove it. Through all of that, God opened the door for me to come and give a speech at the United Nations to all of the global leaders that came for the speech from every religion, every kindred, every tongue, every race. All these sovereign leaders came in to hear this speech on how one of their comrades had an incredible life-changing healing miracle that could not be explained. Even the medical doctors couldn't explain it. I came into the UN, gave the speech in total about the Lord Jesus Christ. And since then, we have been ministering now some seven years. Over 38 um, souls have been repented, been baptized in Jesus' name, and received the gift of the Holy Ghost. God is doing incredible things. I'm talking about global leaders that are in the kingdom of God that are in the church of the living God. We've never thought something like this could happen to such a level, but it is happening right now. And you're talking to the person who was the, uh, the, the founder of that ministry, and God is doing incredible things. Just recently, the United Nations honored me and appointed me as the Wafunif Goodwill Ambassador and Special Envoy to the Nations, which means that I now operate on behalf of a, no, a number of sustainable development goals around the world and go on tours of duty and assisting sovereignties in a number of ways, which has afforded me a lot of relationships and connections and also inside information to what God is doing, not just through the media and all the things that are deceptive right now, but hands-on information. And through that experience, I've been able to give information to the pastors and leaders of our fellowship that they need so that they can move the kingdom forward. God is helping us, church. He is helping us to have cutting edge information so the church isn't in the dark. And on these tours of duty, God has opened the door for me to minister and to do other things through the kingdom of God on these tours of duty around the world. And hundreds and hundreds of people have been saved and hundreds of people and leaders and, and ministries have been, been born and connecting with missionaries. It's incredible what God is doing through the United Nations ministry. And we thank God for it. But I want to talk to you today, and we can talk about more of that at a different day, but in the short time we talk, I want to share with you some of the things that God has been showing me. As a goodwill ambassador, doors have been opened for me to get information that is cutting edge and classified and been able to be a part of closed door meetings to know what is happening so the church is not ignorant to the enemy's devices. And, and, and so we have spiritual insight and I've been praying and God has helped me to understand some very important spiritual principles that I wanna to talk to you about. I wanna to talk to you today about this topic. There has been a shift. We need a sense of urgency. There has been a shift. Let me tell you that things have changed. We are moving forward towards the coming of the Lord. We are moving forward and all the things that are taking place. We're moving into a one world system that must happen 
for a prophecy to continue to move forward. There has been an unbelievable shift. And we, as the people of God, we need a sense of urgency like never before. Amen. I want to read you a scripture in the book of Proverbs. The Bible tells us Proverbs 29 and 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. People do not want to perish. People care about their bodies. They care about their existence. So this scripture needs more revelation because when there is no vision, people perish. So people must be crying out for visionaries. I want to change the phrasing a little bit and bring it up to 2020 conversation. People are perishing, so they need visionaries. Somebody give me a vision. That's the cry right now in our world today. We're in a world of chaos. We're in a world of confusion because people are crying out for direction and they're looking for visionaries. And I believe it's a perfect platform for the church and God's getting ready to show this to us very quickly. But let me share with you what, why this is so important that the church steps up and gets a sense of urgency because we're moving, this thing is moving forward and we need to move forward with it. The Bible tells us in Habakkuk 2, in Habakkuk 2 and verse number two, the Bible says, and, and the Lord answered me, and the Lord said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. What we're seeing in our world right now what we're seeing in 2000, the first part of 2020 in the chaos and the anarchy and the confusion is we are seeing people crying out for direction and whatever visions they get, they're running with it. They're running with it. Think about it. 2020, the literal name and the title for 2020, 2020, 2020 vision. The church is the only entity on the planet that can provide 2020 vision. Perfect world vision, perfect spiritual vision. And the church has to step forward because if the church doesn't step forward, there's gonna be total chaos. There's gonna be total anarchy. Think about this. We're looking at right now people crying out the, the news and the media and everything going on in our world is absolute chaos because people are crying out for direction. And then we have opportunists and global systems and, 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 and elites and sovereignties. And that's another conversation that we can have one day that are getting involved in manipulating the systems for control. For example, in, in 2020, COVID-19, the coronavirus exploded on the scene and primarily America, but all over the world, the world is infected with coronavirus, COVID-19, and it has destabilized the world and broken the economy and broken everything and confused everything that the world has been trusting in. This, in, in a matter of months, COVID-19 has unraveled everything that people trusted in. Single-handedly, a pandemic, a virus, an epidemic has unraveled everything, and it caused great confusion. People isolated, shut in, and all the things that are going on. But it didn't just stop there. Right on the heels of that, unleashed racial issues, nationality and nationality, and, and, and unrest and protesting, and, and all these things that are going on because of atrocities that are taking place on the lines of color if you can believe such a thing. All the things are taking place in our country predominantly, but it, the fires grew all over the world because of racial issues. Right on the heels of COVID comes racial unrest. Right on the heels of protesting and racial unrest comes opportunists and protesters and violence and looters 
and criminals begin to tear apart the communities and, and some communities are still being torn apart today, a complete destabilization of our system has taken place in a matter of months. One situation after another, one situation after another. And before you know it, because the government don't have any answers, they start throwing money at everybody with stimulus packages and, and, and all these things. Where is, I got a question for you. Where is all of this money in the stimulus packages coming from? America is trillions of dollars in debt. Where are they getting money from? Where is it coming from? What is happening? Who has the power to write America a check of that size? That's another conversation. But we're dealing with things where the value of the dollar is shrinking right before our eyes. In a matter of months, the value of the dollar is shrinking. And all of these things are taking place right before our eyes in 2020, the year where people need vision. It's time for the church to step up and be the church because something has shifted in the spirit world. This isn't just a physical situation we're looking at with COVID-19 and, and racial issues and, and, and violence and tearing apart of communities and, and stimulus money and the devaluing of the, the, the American dollar. We're not just seeing that happen. Something spiritual is taking place, folks. And that's what I wanna talk about. In the process of all of this confusion and chaos, it must take place for order to take place. Somebody with a vision to help the chaos must arise. Somebody must stabilize this unstable world. Just like that, the world is now in chaos. Let me just talk to you about something very quickly, spiritually. Satan is called the devil and dictator. I will not call him the God of this world, small g. I'll call him the dictator and tyrant of this world. Satan has an agenda of global dominance and global takeover. He has the insane notion and thought that he's some, somehow going to destroy the kingdom of God. I don't understand it but that's how insanity is. But in his plight to move his agenda forward, the whole world is unstable today because there's been a spiritual shift. The enemy is at work in gaining control of a system and having the headship of it. To have the headship of it, you first must tear everything down to build everything up. You ever heard of the phrase, out with the old and in with the new? That's where we are. In the midst of all of this chaos, Satan is going to attempt to gain control. Listen to me, church. We're watching a global takeover. We're watching a transition. Satan must unify his kingdom. Satan must bring everything together under one system. The only way to do that is to first tear down and destroy the old system. You're watching an attempt to gain control of the whole world. That's what you're watching. We're watching the pushing together of the one world system. Let me give you some scriptures. In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 2. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 11, the Bible tells us, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 11, lest Satan should get an advantage on us or an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, 
for we are not ignorant of his devices. God is going to put us in a position where we are not ignorant to the attacks and the plans of the enemy. And I feel like I have a, a piece to the puzzle I want to give you tonight. That word advantage in the literal is pleonectale. It's a literal word that means in a wrestling match, he maneuvers with such strategy that he gains a superior hold and gains control. We're watching a wrestling match for advantage and control right now in this world, in this world system. Jesus told us, I do not want you to be ignorant so that you can start having revival without fear of what's going on in this world. Things are happening right now where the church needs to get involved with revival first. We can't get distracted with all the things that are going on in this world. We can't get distracted with all the chaos. We've got to stay focused on revival and what God has called us to do. I want to just share with you something that is very, very um, high, high level information as we start talking about the pulling together of the one world system. The world is right now in chaos. We all admit that. We all understand that. But the world must become one in order for scripture to begin to move prophecy forward. The one world system is the next item on the agenda. For example, I was in a United Nations meeting just recently. And um, in this meeting, all the world leaders were there. Um, most of the world leaders were there. And in this meeting, they had a guest speaker, which was highly unusual. Uh, a guest speaker, and you would all know these people if I would mention them to you. And this guest speaker was invited to give their vision of how to move the world forward successfully through the coronavirus epidemic and all the other things that are taking place. And they began to tell us, all of the, these global leaders, they began to tell us that they are working on a device, an ID2020 device that will be implanted in you. And this device will be able to, with time release, send vaccinations into your body to protect you from the, the, the COVID-19. And not only that, but the device will also help in many other ways. And also it will number the population. And this device will work on a many other ways that I don't have time to go into right now. But they have it, the world leaders and myself watched this lecture, couldn't believe what we were seeing and I watched in this meeting as global leaders one by one walked up and swore allegiance to this new process and this new ID system for their sovereignties. One by one, these leaders walked up and swore allegiance. And in this process, I watched it and looked at it and I wondered at it. I said, Lord, what is taking place right now? And, and because I'm in this unique position, and I need to tell all of you so that you can have a sense of urgency. I believe that's why the Lord gives me these understandings. The Lord said to me, right now the world has been unraveled so that it can be brought back together under a system. And when everybody's concerned for their own lives and in fear and panic, they will come together and they will follow a visionary. For without a vision, the people perish. So in other words, nobody wants to perish. So people are saying, give us a visionary. And I watched in this meeting, global leaders swearing allegiance to this visionary, saying, we're on board because we want to survive. We don't want to perish. We're watching scripture being fulfilled before our eyes. And I'm bringing you this information. And the Lord said, it must come together for the enemy to move his diabolical plan forward. And I want to read to you a scripture in the book of Matthew 24 and 7. It's very important that we, we pull these things together, and, I'm, and I'm, I know I'm running out of time. But in Matthew 24 and 7, it says, 
For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Everything in Matthew 24 and 7 is happening right now. Everything in Matthew 24 and 7 is happening right now. Complete chaos. Jesus spoke in Matthew 24 and 7 about complete chaos. But wait a minute. We're supposed to be talking about a one world system. Everything is in chaos. Chaos is what will bring together the one world system because people don't want to perish. In this, it says, nations shall rise against nation. Here's a sign, nation, literal translation, ethos. Races will rise against races. There's marching in the streets right now. There's racial issues all over the place. Everybody's crying race, race, race. Races are coming against one, one, one another right now. Nation, ethos is rising against ethos. Kingdom against kingdom. Basilia is the literal word there. Kingdoms or sovereignties are at war and at odds with each other. That is not only is races and colors and cultures at odds against each other, but kingdoms and nations are at odds against each other. All of this is taking place right before our eyes. Jesus said that in Matthew 24 and 7. Total chaos is happening. Is there a diabolical plot behind the scenes so that everything is in chaos? so that a visionary can step up and bring unity under one world system. Let me explain to you, Satan cannot succeed if he does not have a one world kingdom. He cannot succeed without having complete control. So he's gonna do everything in his power to bring everything together. For example, in Mark chapter three and verse number 23, in the book of Mark, chapter three and verse number 23. The Bible says, and he called them unto him, talking about Jesus. And he said unto them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Jesus is giving us a principle to spiritual warfare. He's giving us an understanding that why there must be a spiritual one world system because Satan has to bring it all together. So he gets into says a kingdom that is divided spiritually cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided. He cannot stand, but hath an end. I was in a very high level classified meeting and one of the global leaders who you know very well, he's in the limelight, in the spotlight on global media all the time, uh, the leader of Russia. He made this statement that I wondered at, and I want you to know this. He said, there are not many sovereignties and the real leaders are watching from far away. The real leaders are far away, in quotes. There are not many sovereignties and the real leaders are far away. What does that mean? A house divided cannot stand. And there may be an appearance of division for the view of the masses, but could they be really unified under a di diabolical system? Jesus said, a house can't stand if it's divided. And in this United Nations ministry and in this United Nations platform, God's afforded me the right to be able to see these meetings so that I can bring the information to you that the system is coming together. But I think it's coming together for a purpose. I believe that this is coming together as a one world system. George Bush said, and I quote in 1991 in his speech, it is time, 1991, it is time for us to work towards a one world system. 1991, 
what's going to happen in 2001. We are watching everything being pulled together under a visionary. And I watch global leaders come together and swear allegiance. And I want to mention to you this on a spiritual level. I want you to think about this. Our Bible tells us something that's very concerning about our world system. There's going to be a day when the world leaders are informed and the world leaders are going to be at war against Israel. And when Jesus comes, the world leaders are going to turn towards Jesus to fight him. We need to talk about that as I, I I'm, I'm, what time is it? I'm rapidly coming to a close and, and we need to talk about this real quick. In the book of Revelation, 19 and 19. Now I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. In the book of Revelation 19, 19, in the New Living Translation, in the NLT, it says, Revelation 19, 19. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. Now you go through all of that, you'll understand that Christ is coming with his army from the clouds of glory. And he says, then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. Did you get that? He saw the beast and the kings of the world all working together to fight against Jesus. The kings of this world will be expecting to fight against Jesus. What is going on? What is happening? What kind of information is being shared behind the scenes that we don't know about? But I do know what the Bible says. The Bible says the beast and the kings of this world are going to be working together. And they're going to turn when they see Jesus. They're going to turn their attention to fight against him. What we need to understand is at this time in scripture, everybody's working together. But right now in 2020, everybody's divided. So we're going to go from being divided to the whole world working together and then agreeing to attack the Lord. I remember hearing a speech by some global leaders. And um, it was alarming for them to say, we don't believe in a Messiah. But if he was to come back, they could attack him again. As if the crucifixion was a success. It was an utter failure. Because when he was crucified, he made the way for all of us to be saved in the name of Jesus Christ and the receiving of his Holy Ghost. So we're seeing a diabolical plot being worked through right before our eyes. And as the church, we have got to get a sense of urgency. That is, there is a lot more going on behind the scenes than what we see taking place before our eyes. And we are not ignorant to his devices. And we're going to be move, maneuvering the church and moving the church in position to have revival like never before. It's time for us to start giving again so we can, we can build the kingdom of God. It's time for us to start being faithful in the services and, and ministries of the church of the living God. It's time for us to get back out into our communities and start reaching our world again because this thing is wrapping up. And like I said, we are closer to the coming of the Lord now than we have ever been. And a generation has been completed. May 14th, 2018, was the 70th anniversary of the nation of Israel. 70 years is a generation. Something's happening. That has never happened before. We are now seeing a significant shift 
in the generation of Israel's statehood. Amen. I want, I want God to touch us. I'm, I'm done. I want God to touch us. And I want to pray over everybody that's listening and watching and under the sound of my voice. I want there to be such a sense of urgency come over us that we will move forward the kingdom like never before. And I want to thank Pastor Delgado and the incredible family, Lighthouse of the Valley, for letting me speak to you today. Midweek fire. God's going to do incredible things. Let that, let that midweek fire strike up right now in the hearts of everybody that's watching and that we all will say, Lord, what can I do for the kingdom? What can I do for my pastor? What can I do for my church? God, I want to be ready. And I don't, I don't want to just be ready. I want to be a force in the earth before you come again. I want to pray for you right now while you're viewing. Pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let a sense of urgency come over us like never before. I pray over everybody that watches this message, that views this message, that gets a chance to listen to this message, that a sense of urgency come over us, that we get involved in the kingdom like never before, that we turn up our prayer life, we start worshiping, we start fasting, we start studying, we start giving like never before, that we get back to the first works, we get back to the passion that we once had, that we move the kingdom forward like never before. Lord, let something happen in us today in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let something happen in us today. God bless you. So honored to be with you today in Jesus' name. And may the Lord move in your spirit and the fire strike up like never before. God bless you, Pastor. See you all soon. Amen. God is really doing something all around the world. And, and I'm going to tell you something. We have gotten to the place where we can become cold to what the Lord is doing. But, or we can wake up and see exactly what God is doing. Church, we are the church. And we say church and we think just people that got together and uh, decided to sing and, and clap and hear a message. But it's more than that. Now it's time for the church to become exactly what they are. Thank you, Dr. Wilson, for sharing your heart. Thank you for giving us something that's going to transform our lives and even kickstart us into the next dimension of what the Lord wants to do in this season. I want to pray with us. I know Dr. Art Wilson has already prayed with us, but I want to pray that God would just begin to do a greater work than we can ever imagine, not only here in Stockton, California, but all around the world. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the man of God and the sacrifices that he makes to do what he does. We ask you to bless him, his family, and all that fall underneath him. Lord, enable him to be safe and allow the anointing to go with him that he can bring us more good reports. Lord, thank you for the people of God that are tuning in right now, for giving them a burden to reach the lost and to do whatever they can do to change their world. God, revival is here. And Lord, the great awakening is beginning to happen. And Lord, the enemy comes in like a flood, but you raise up standards and you're going to raise up a standard against him. We thank you, God, and we honor you. And we ask you to enable us to do everything you called us to do because we are the church. Give us vision. The world waits on their vision, but God, you give us vision. For without it, we will perish. But with it, we'll know every step of the way what we ought to do. Let revelation and understanding come to our, our wings and let us run with it, that we may be able to encourage others as well. Snatching some out of the fire, hating the garments, but Lord, loving those individuals. God, we praise you and we honor you and we give you the glory. And maybe for those of you that are watching here, and someone invited you, or maybe this is your first time all by yourself, and you decided to tune in, this was a great day. Midweek fire is going to be something that's going to inspire everyone. But you may not even know what that's all about, and you don't even have a, a relationship with Jesus Christ yet. I'm appealing to you now on God's behalf. In other words, you need to embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. Well, you say, how do I do that, preacher? You simply say, Lord, I believe that Jesus came to this earth for me and that he died on a cross for me and that he was buried in a grave. And on the third day, 
He rose from the grave, conquering death and the grave. Now you need to not only say that with your mouth, but you need to believe that in your heart, in your mind. And if you believe that and you embrace that, then you can ask God to forgive you of your sin. What sin? The sin you were born into, the sin I was born into, the sin that separates you from God. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I believe that I need a savior and that savior is Jesus Christ. And you know, when you ask God to forgive you like that, guess what? He will forgive you immediately. And now that he's forgiven you, if that's you, and you've asked him to forgive you of your sin, you need to find a neighbor, a friend, a relative, someone, associate, someone who knows Jesus Christ intimately. And you need to say, I need you to baptize me in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sin, the sin I just repented of. And that neighbor, that friend, that relative, that associate will take you to a body of water, maybe to a baptismal pool, maybe even in your bathtub, and they'll immerse you, fully dip you underneath that water and call the name of Jesus over you. And when you come out of that water, the scripture says that you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise of the Holy Ghost is to you, to your children, and to everyone around you, even as many as the Lord is still calling. And you'll know that you received the Holy Ghost because you'll begin to speak in another language, we call it speaking in tongues, that you've never learned before. My God, God is good. God is the best thing that you're ever gonna encounter in your lifetime. So rejoice with Him, walk with Him, and never go back. So those of you that are joining for your first time, we welcome you to this family and to God's family. God bless you all. Let's rejoice. Let's have vision. Let's see what the Lord wants to do going forward. And again, thank you, Dr. Art Wilson, for the powerful words that are going to change this church and this world. God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is good. Definitely good.